up guys, Chris of EA Travels. I'm down here in Charles City and going to take a tour of Kitty One Plantation. Historic home built back in the 1770s. And I was actually out here last fall for the Berkeley Autumn Pilgrimage Tour. It was really crowded, I, I didn't have much time so I thought I'd come back, uh, do a proper video. And so yeah, I'm just gonna take a walk around. Uh, I'm gonna take a house tour. And there's a museum, an archeology span museum across the way that I'm uh, take a walk through. And to give you a history of the area, this land was first granted to Sir George Yardley, early Virginia colonial governor. And uh, yeah, one of the originals to come over, he actually came over on the boat with John Rolfe, uh, the one that shipwrecked in Bermuda. Uh, they were stranded on Bermuda for about 10 months. They had to break the ship apart, build two ships out of that ship. I don't know how you do that on an island and then sailed uh, on to Jamestown. But uh, yeah, and they think he never lived here. He actually lived on the other side of the James, Flower Dew 100, a, a little to the right, a little west. He never le uh, lived here, but eventually 1667 fell into the hands of a Charles Roan. And uh, Charles Roan, I recognize that name from when I was up in Essex County, south side of the Rappahannock, when I was in Tappahannock. Uh, a lot of Roans in that area. But uh, yeah, and you could tell uh, many add-ons. I'm sure the section to the front was probably the original, just a, a weatherboard house. And the first house on this property was built in the 1720s. And then in the 1770s, this house was built, and it was built uh, for uh, Dr. William Rickman. And Dr. William Rickman, he married the sister of William Henry Harrison, our ninth president. The Harrisons, of course, are born at Berkeley Plantation right down the road. Actually, it would be this way. And uh, he was appointed by the Continental Congress to uh, be the head of the Virginia hospitals during the Revolutionary War. So, yeah, pretty noted doctor. And... Yeah, to take advantage of the shade. And you can see these, it looks like they would have had terraces uh, probably going down here. Uh, like I say, and this is where the Kitty Wan Creek enters the James. The Wayanoke Peninsula, named after the Wayanoke Indians that uh, were uh, original inhabitants, uh, who John Smith first encountered. And here's the front of the house. Like I say, this strip across the front, I'm sure, is the uh, original portion of the house. A little pediment right there. Um, check this out. We're on the riverfront. And I think there's another marker over there. I'll just go get a look at uh, that side of the house. Got a lot of lightning rods on that thing. Looks like somebody else is uh, coming to visit. Whew. All right, sneak across. All right, you've got a little cellar door right there, a little homemade door, pretty cool. A couple hinged up windows, bell over there. Oh, and to let you know, the first uh, slaves were recorded here in 1780, and as of 1860, there were 41 slaves uh, listed on the property. I forgot to mention, they think the slave house was on the other side of the house. So... Okay, in the West Lawn over here, more archaeology work. And uh, 1931, uh, these, this would have been a garden. There were two buildings uh, listed that would have stood. But looking at photos from the late 19th century, uh, they, they think there are there a couple more buildings, it looks like, over there. All right, so a few people have arrived. Yeah, hopefully it's not crowded in there. See, this thing's kind of uh, spliced together. Said, there's a lot in here. I'll try to go slow so you can get a good look. But um, 
yeah, all kinds of artifacts. Like I said, uh, donated by uh, Mr. Cropper. And over here, a little tobacco display, some dried tobacco leaves, and Avalon cigarettes. Uh, some cigar boxes and a can of Prince Albert cigarettes. Pretty neat. Oh, Queen Victoria's husband. And uh, if anybody knows what these are, I've seen a couple of these. And it looks like episode one, I'm sorry, episode three of season one of the TV show Turn was filmed here, some scenes. And uh, I know, I remember from watching the show, uh, Sherwood and Berkeley plantations are, are in there as well. So they were in this whole area doing a lot of filming. Uh, some snuff, a lighter. And uh, yeah, you're seeing they've, uh, they're putting a, a lot of work into this. Oh, and it, also to tell you, this was originally called Milford Plantation. And like I say, just a small middling plantation, not, not that big. And a uh, pretty neat inlay, this piano. And it looks like another one over here, and you can play it with your feet, it looks like down there. And uh, Annabelle Pointer Richardson Legon. Quite a, uh, quite a name there. Some old clocks in here. And some more over here. Pretty fancy. And it looks like there was wood paneling in here, maybe originally. And creating music. What is this thing? Some sort of washboard instrument. Hmm. Uh, a gyro rasp, African stick. African stip, stick scraper. And is that a turntable in there? I'm not gonna touch it, but it looks like it probably is. More clocks over here. It's about time, William Cropper's clock, uh, clock collection. A little pocket watch down here. Like another old oil lamp up there, and all kinds of trinkets over here. A camel, interesting. Shaker high tray, a high chair. Great granddaughter of Wilma Cropper. Pause and read. Doing the roof. And some old nails and shingles. Yeah, some of these old L hinges. Some more homemade nails. I wonder if those are like collectibles. Original, huh? West Side Manor House. Tiny vase down here. Some ironstone china. to uh, collect uh, clocks, some carnival glass, some iridescent glass. You can see kind of the rainbow type uh, when you move side to side. Yeah. Pretty cool. William Holm. Earthware from Burslem, England. Yeah. A bunch of lamps up here. Okay, so this one's 1725 to 1750. Terry clock. Silas Terry clock. And more clocks and bells. Let's 
some depression glass and that came from the uh, depression era that's where it gets its name cut through the hall a little lamp up there a couple more clocks some sleigh bells and uh, kitchen circa 1840s and Dr. William Selden uh, looks like I added that there it is 1910 Dr. Selden's office to the right yeah pretty much looks the same some broken windows right there in front of his office apparently that no longer stands but uh, I'm assuming maybe this is the door from it water closet okay we know what a water closet is um coca okay big old iron stove Feeding turkey and chickens. Made over Westover Plantation. Tart shells. Yeah, early toaster. Put the bread in, let one side cook, flip it around. Egg crate. <laughs> yeah, look how small and narrow this door is. Okay, it must have had a stove coming out here at one time, it looks like. Little glass slippers. Oh yeah, there's uh, the Clark daughter. Seen her picture. All right, we're on the first floor rear wing bedroom. Check out this rocking chair. Hmm. Eliza Stevens, great grandmother of William Clark. Proper Wilma. Oh, springs on that thing. Check out this record, uh, Victor record player. It must be a 77 right there. Walter D. Moses and Company out of Richmond, Virginia. A battery radio. And just as I suspected, this was probably the back of the uh, original portion of the house. Um, oh, this would have been that water closet, and yeah, hope they uh, clean those good, and yeah, more of these things. I pause and read, hallway 1935, wallpaper, and uh, another small door. Okay, yeah, Northeast bedroom, uh, circa 1770. I modified in the 1840s by that Dr. Selden. And more wood paneling. Um, pretty neat design. Plate warmer down here. Keep the food warm. And there he is, Lafayette's departure. Okay, Mount Vernon, 1784. That's pretty cool. Oh uh, yeah, panel room at Kitty One, Roman pilasters, and this would have been a buffet. A buffet from Smith's Fort, 1761. I, I made a video on that, I, rem I remember that. That's how it looked, 1935, so yeah, pretty similar. Closets uh, were installed in the 1840s. Keep 
keep the liquor. Okay, it's got a Queen Anne period mahogany flip top game table. A bunch of Queen Anne furniture, Queen Anne chairs. You can tell by this vase back, kind of. Grandfather clock. Glasgow. All right, so. Oh. A little walnut desk right here. Okay, Richmond, Virginia, 1883. Oh, uh, I guess I'll... Ah, dang, I just hit my head on this. Watch your head. Okay, I should have read that. <laughs> Too busy filming. But I'll watch my head on this one. All kinds of items down here. All kinds of tools. Strong smell down here. Grindstone. Uh, we see a horse saddle. And some woodworking uh, tools. Big old saw. Some ice skates. Pretty neat. Big giant ladles. Over here, some Irish pipes. I wonder if those are found in Ireland. Wow. Kind of crazy there. Find them here. Post office. Some little door hinge things, it looks like, maybe. Old lock. Uh, Charles City Jail. <laughs> okay. Check out that door. Wow. Okay, let's walk. Here's some more uh, lamps up here. Handmade well bricks. Yeah, quite a collection. Need to call American Pickers. Uh, uh that's kind of neat. Oh, be careful. Some old coffee mills. Walk over there real quick. Oh, Cropper calendar, huh? 1999. Looks like he had farms in Maryland during hog killing time. Wow. All kinds of grinders over here. Mipsico Church. I know we're right near Mipsico Road. I remember seeing that coming in. Oh, wow, okay. From the old schoolhouse on Kiwan. Okay. Old shoes right there. Some Billy beer. I think that was uh, before my time, but uh, Jimmy Carter's brother, right? The Pepsi cans with the little uh, little rip-off tops and RC Cola, is that? That's going way back. Okay, all right, I'm gonna head up to the uh, top floor. Jail torn down in 1972. Watch my head. Ooh. Okay. Skim coat first layer. Yeah, they're putting a lot of work into this place. All right. So the machine. There. 
big old trunks right here and one of these homemade quilts it looks like okay patchwork quilt looks like another trunk over here wash your hands Mr. and Miss George Stevens request the honor of your presence at the marriage of their daughter Nellie. A wedding invitation. And when I was here on that pilgrimage tour, they had told me that this room is haunted. Life story of Francis Nakami. Bed warmer. Okay, last room. There's your little bathroom at the time where you could wash up. Another dresser. Another quilt. West bedroom floor mantle. A little fireplace right there. Keep warm. Uh, some shaving tools. Check out that little door. of the Archaeological Society of Virginia. And uh, yeah, a bunch of volunteers meet here regularly. And yeah, a bunch of plaques going through the history of the property. Uh, going back to, like I had said earlier, Sir George Yardley, 1618, had uh, received that first patent. Later, as I said, it fell into the hands of Charles Brown. And its most prominent owner, uh, owner was the Dr. Rickman like I say, revolutionary physician. And he's buried out back. There's a graveyard back behind the house, uh, maybe about a mile. I'll check that out on, on my way out of here. And, okay, Revolutionary War until the Civil War. There's another tombstone in the Kittywan School. All right, and uh, 1846 fell into the hands of Dr. William Selden. And he owned the property up into the Civil War, 1863. Um, what is this, uh, African-American connection? Um, talking about some of the slaves, uh, the Parish Hill community, that's an African-American community in the area. 1917 uh, schoolhouse, still stands, uh, way in Oak Road. Um, yeah, so some investors had purchased the house, four investors in 1863, uh, one of whom was the brother of Jeb Stewart, they owned it until 18, uh, the 1890s. One of the long-term residents was the Henry Crackle. I remember seeing some of his furniture in the house. A German immigrant. And then William T. Pointer bought Kitty Wan in 1897, uh, but ultimately sold it um, only 13 years later. And there's the Pointer family. Okay, Lauren Clark and his wife, and uh, yes, yeah, so who had uh, several owners. A guy doing some farming right there. A bunch of turkeys. And Wilma Clark. Okay, and the last owner right there, Bill Cropper. And that's where a lot of the artic artif uh, artifacts come from. He was into archaeology, and he wanted, when he died, this area to be preserved and used for historical purposes. So that was pretty cool. He did that. And over here would be kind of the African-American section, talking about the early arrivals. 
Uh, Africans come to in that first 20 and odd arrived, of course, 1619 aboard a Dutch ship, the White Lion, and they actually had been pirated. They were originally on a Portuguese ship headed to Veracruz, Mexico. <laughs> the Dutch pirated the ship, uh, brought them on board, and then brought them to Virginia. In that original batch, they weren't all proper slaves. Some were indentured servants and, and lived lives of freedom. And yeah, there's a lot of information here, so you can always pause and uh, pause and read. But yeah, just going right through the uh, before the Civil War, the antebellum years, property taxes uh, through the Civil War. And there's that black community I mentioned, the Parish Hill. And some old church, uh, looks like a schoolhouse. Rosewald School and the Native American section. And here's the uh, one of John White's paintings. John White led that third expedition to Roanoke Island, that lost colony. Uh, he was an artist, so you'll see a lot of his paintings in these museums. And lots of arrowheads. And I just learned that <laughs> I always wondered how they can say, oh, these are 8,000 years old, these are 2,000 years old, but they can tell by the surrounding soil what other uh, artifacts are found with them, whether it was pottery, uh, how deep they had to, uh, how deep in the ground. So, yeah, if you're into archaeology, this is a place you want to visit. And, uh, yeah, uh, 1912, John Smith's map. And he encountered the Wayanoke Indians, and that's why this is uh, areas of Wayan uh, they call it Wayanoke Point. And the Wayanokes were one of the uh, villages in Powhatan's chiefdom, part of his confederation. So, all right, um, yeah, there's more up here. And like I say, uh, Mr. Cropper, a lot of these are were part of his collection and ancient beads, the, the early Egyptian, what? Phoenicians and Romans, wow. Oh, and these are uh, really big uh, arrowheads. And, uh, oh wow. Yeah, it's got the little crank on the bottom. And they've got one of those uh, phones next door at North Bend Plantation on, on the wall in the house. Uh, these were those up there were found in, here at Kitty One, and here's a, a model of a pontoon bridge, and they laid those down not too far west of here. Yeah, 50 mile, 51 mile wagon train cross headed to Petersburg, and. Stone object, yeah, some mini balls from Appalachia area. Pretty cool chair. And here's a cobble. All right, yeah, here's that wearing oak neck or somewhere in that area. A couple of these chairs. Some sewing items, and that Clark family lived here early 1900s. Oh, a little ram head right there. Kind of cool. Oh, and this is a replica of an old Civil War camp chair. Charles City Courthouse, 1864. Wow. Yep, that's how it looked during the Civil War. Oh, kind of a neat chair right here. Platform rocker. Oh, all right, George Washington, Declaration of Independence. Wow. And a bunch of the first uh, 22 presidents. So there they are. Many from Virginia. Okay. 
Cleveland versus Thurman, 1888. Ceramics, uh, periwinkle shells. Some more presidents. Kind of embroidered chair down here. Oh, uh, Civil War, this is an original Civil War camp chair. Similar to the one next to Grant there in the picture. That's pretty neat. Oh, these are some pretty, uh, pretty good arrowheads. Some tools. Oh, is this for a baby? Cradle board, circa 1700s. All right, yeah, definitely some uh, neat items in here. Big sofa, I didn't look at that. Oh, and there's some grinding stones down there. I missed those, but all right, cool. All right, guys, a lot in the museum. Yeah, as always, like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon. See you.